Hey guys, so for all of you that have been patiently anticipating the start of this series, your wait is finally over. Welcome to the first episode of Feet. The idea for this series, very similar to a lot of the videos I make, came from my covers. The first cover in which I started to get compliments on my footwork and questions about how to develop that type of footwork and what sort of techniques I'm using was a Dance Gavin Dance song called Son of Robot. You might have seen this cover. In the chorus of this song, I am maintaining a 16th note pattern on my feet, going right, left, right, left, alternating back and forth. And at certain points throughout the chorus, I double the amount of notes going from 16th to 30 seconds, maintaining right, left, right, left. I think that specifically is what sparked the idea for this series because I got a lot of compliments in that video and other videos where I use the similar technique as I do in that chorus. The technique I use, I refer to as scuffs. Scuffs are essentially a type of heel toe pattern. And because of all that, that's where I decided to start this series. First thing I wanted to address was what is heel toe? How does it work? What are scuffs? How do they work? And how can you implement them into your own grooves and patterns? Now coming off the start of my What the Fill series, something that came apparent to me pretty quickly is that not all of you are at the same skill level. Some of you are at a similar skill level to myself. Some of you are at a more advanced level and some of you are at more of a beginner, sort of starting off in the first two years level. And because of that fact, the second episode for hands, the second episode for what the fill and this episode of feet, I'm going to try my best to keep to a structure in which at the beginning of the episode, I teach you a basic fundamental, something that anybody can pick up no matter the skill set, no matter the level and start to use. And then I will later throughout the episode, expand on that, taking it up to a much more advanced level, a much more advanced setting. So if you're watching this video and you get through the first half with relative ease, and then you get to the second part and things start to get a little bit more tricky, a little bit more advanced. Don't worry, it's intended to be that way. I want the second part of this video to cater to the more advanced players and to also give a beginner player something to strive for, a trajectory on where the fundamental ends up taking you and how it actually is important and can be implemented into regular everyday performance settings. With all that being said, in part one of this video, we're going to tackle heel toe. In part two, we're going to tackle scuffs and eventually I'm going to leave you with a six tuplet scuff groove that you can practice on your own. All right, so part one, heel toe. What is it? Why is it called heel toe? How do I perform it? Heel toe is a fundamental, extremely important and versatile technique that most drummers eventually come to learn whether or not they know that it's titled heel toe. The fundamental in this technique is essentially managing the pressure points on the pedal while performing a double stroke. The first point in which you will apply pressure to play the first note in the double stroke will be to the heel portion of your pedal. This is a extended footboard known as a longboard pedal. Longboard pedal can be easier to perform heel toe techniques with. However, this technique is still very doable on a standard length pedal. In fact, I learned heel toe first on a pearl eliminator pedal with a standard footboard configuration. The first point on the pedal in which you will apply pressure to execute the first stroke in the double stroke will be the heel portion of the pedal, obviously heel toe. Okay, so the heel applies pressure back here at the bottom of the pedal to force the pedal into the batter head of the kick drum. The second stroke in this double stroke sequence is performed by the balls of your feet or your toes. And that's performed up here at the toe portion of your pedal. And what this ends up looking like is sort of a rocking motion where you drop your heel first and then you point your toes forward and launch the pedal back into the beater head off the rebound. Kind of looks like this. Now here is heel toe performed with my actual foot. Just as I said before, we're first gonna apply pressure on the back of the plate like this. And then we're gonna drop the toes and push them forward to push the beater back into the head for the second part of the stroke. Sped up, it's gonna look more like this. So that's heel toe. The reason why this technique is so important and valuable is because it gives you the ability to play cleaner, faster double strokes on your feet inside of grooves. Here's an example of that now. So 
that's a very, very basic example of heel toe at the actual kick. Before I was fast at playing this technique, I needed to get used to that rocking motion. And I did so by practicing it everywhere I went. You don't need a drum set to practice heel toe. You can do it on any surface, whether you're wearing shoes, socks, bare feet, doesn't matter, you can practice heel toe. Most of my early practicing for heel toe was done in the classroom in high school. I would take out my iPhone, put on a metronome, and just practice heel toe on the floor when I was supposed to be paying attention to what was going on. And that just looks like this. So you can see there, all I'm doing is rocking back and forth. You wanna do this slow and in control at first and very slowly start to build up your speed. So now let's get you playing along with me, learning some new exercises and getting the heel toe technique down for yourself. The first exercise I'm gonna take you through is on your screen for you now. The first bar in this exercise, we're maintaining a quarter note pulse on the hi-hat, we're putting a snare drum on three, and we're playing eighth notes on our feet. The sticking for the feet is listed above. As you can see, those eighth notes are all double strokes. So we're gonna start off this groove right, right, and then switch to left, left, and cycle that through the first bar. The second bar, we're gonna chop down the amount of eighth notes on the feet. We're gonna play one on one, and and one on three and. The one end is gonna be right, right, and the three end is gonna be left, left. I'm gonna perform this for you to play along to at three different tempos. We're gonna start at 130, then we're gonna go back through the exact same thing and do it at 160, and then finish it off at 190. Here is Feet, episode one, exercise one, now. Great, so now that we've gotten through that, we're gonna go back through and play the exact same thing at the same BPM increments. Only change is, I'm now gonna start with a left foot lead. So we're gonna get used to playing on the downbeat with our left foot leading in a double stroke, heel toe type technique. Follow me along, here is Feet Episode 1, Exercise 2, now. Okay, cool, so that wraps up part one. Now we're gonna go into part two and talk about a concept called scuffs. I don't know whether or not you've heard of this technique before. You might have heard it under a different name. I looked up scuffs when I was preparing for this video and I couldn't really find anything on it. I'm sure it has multiple names like a lot of these sort of fringe techniques do. But when I was learning this technique early on, I had a drum instructor who taught it to me under that name. So I've just rolled with it ever since. I like the name a lot too, it makes sense. It feels and looks like you're scuffing your heel against the floor. So what is a scuff? A scuff is a technique where you use heel toe, but instead of performing double strokes, first you're gonna play heel on the right, then heel on the left, then toe on the right, and toe on the left. So technically you're playing a single stroke, but you're using the heel toe technique to perform it. I personally use scuffs in any situation where I'm playing in a relative subdivision like eighth notes or 16th notes and the groove has been consistent using those. And then I come to a point in that groove where there is a subdivision above the group of eighths that I've been using or the group of 16ths, like 16th triplets or six tuplets or even going double all the way up to a 
30 second note phrasing. I'm gonna get into all of what that looks like here in a sec, but first I'll demonstrate. On my hands, it's super simple. We're just gonna press down on the heel first on the right, and then heel on the left, and then toe on the right, and toe on the left. Now I'll demonstrate the same concept using my feet. This technique I find is actually fairly difficult to perform slow. I find that you kind of use your whole body weight and fall into it almost when you're performing it. And because of that, it really always comes out pretty quick. This is it at a higher speed. So you can tell there, with very little effort, I was able to perform a super fast, super tight group of four notes. Right, left, right, left. It is a single stroke, but I'm using the heel toe technique. That's a scuff. Now here is a series of scuffs performed inside of a groove. So one more demonstration before we get into the exercises. Just as I mentioned with heel toe, you can practice the same concept on flat ground. I found in my own personal experience that practicing heel toe to a click in my ears while I was anywhere was easy and super, super effective. It really, really helped me. Every time I came back to the kit, I felt like I had made leaps and bounds over where I was with the heel toe practice since the last time I sat down. This scuff technique, I didn't find to be as effective when practiced on flat floors. You can still give it a go though, it's super simple. You wanna just get used to that rocking motion. So this guy right here, just one, boom, 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 like that. Okay, going back and forth. So heel, heel, toe, toe, heel, heel, toe, toe. Instead of going one, two, one, two, you're just going heel, heel, toe, toe. Now let's get you into playing along with me. The first exercise I'm gonna take you through is on your screen for you now. In this exercise, our snare placement and our high out placement is gonna be the same as exercises one and two. We're gonna leave the snare on three and we're gonna perform quarter notes on the hi-hat. On our feet, we're gonna perform that scuff technique as 16th notes on one eanda and three eanda for each bar. Two eanda and four eanda will be rested. The three tempos I'm gonna take you through with this exercise are gonna be 130, 160, and 190 once again. For you to play along to, here is episode one, exercise three, now. Okay, cool, so we've got one more exercise to tackle using scuffs. In this exercise, we're gonna be performing a scuff on the one eanda of each bar. And then for the rest of the bar, we're gonna maintain an eighth note pulse in single stroke on your feet. So in this last exercise, we'll use the same tempos as the first three, 130, 160, 190, except I'm gonna add one more to this one. We're gonna take it up to 210. The reason why is because going back to the reason why I started this series, that Dance Gavin Dance cover, the scuffs I perform in the chorus of that song are very fast, up around 210. Here is episode one, exercise four, now. Awesome, so that's it for episode one. I'm gonna leave you with one more exercise as sort of a bonus exercise for the advanced players watching my videos to try out. In this exercise, I'm gonna be using six tuplets along with the scuff technique to create this groove while maintaining a straight pattern on my hi-hat and my snare. Check out the bonus exercise now.
So if you managed to get all these exercises down, let me know which one was your favorite. Send me some videos on my Instagram, on my Facebook, on my Twitter. You can find the links on the screen in the description below. In the next episode of Feet, I'm going to feature one of the videos of the bonus exercise. So if you can handle the bonus exercise and you submit that to me, then you have a chance to be featured in the next episode. To close out this video, just as I said in my first episode of What the Fill, if you have suggestions for how I can reform the format of this video to better suit your needs, to better help you at home in your own practice, please feel free to comment those suggestions. I do read them all over and do honestly take them to heart and I will make changes based on your feedback. I want this platform to best serve you all in getting you better at playing the drums. So whatever I can do to help, please ask. Thank you so much for checking this video out and I will see you all soon with something new.